Black Pitta right, Speaks. What's up, man? Move over a little bit. Yeah, I'm all right. How about yourself? Well, it's I'm been a while, eh? It has been a while, man. How you been doing? Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been surviving. How about yourself? That's about it. Surviving. You know how it goes. Uh, uh have you been following the uh primary tonight? Uh it's all it's all fuck it's all kabuki theater, my friend. Uh it you know, the whole the whole political system is kabuki theater. It's uh I, I've been watching it, I've been paying attention to it, but I don't really know why. It's probably just because I'm bored. Um, you know, because it's it's just all political theater when you take a look at, you know, the whole Trump MAGA, you know, Nikki Haley doing her what is her name? Her name is not even Nikki. It's it's near Haraja. Yeah, Nimrata. Yeah, yeah. Nimrata or something like that. And she's yeah, yeah. she's even she's playing by like the Democratic like uh playbook where she talks about, oh, my life was so hard growing up in America as a brown person. It's like, yeah, right, honey. You know, you know, uh it just just her her whole spiel. And she just I mean, if there was a globalist and you know, they could talk to somebody who, you know. The whole the whole last couple of months with Israel, there's been a complete sort of sea shift, I think, in the way people are recognizing the uh, the whole American political system. And if there was anyone who had her her head up, you know, Netanyahu's butt, it would be Nikki Haley. I mean, everyone in the American political establishment's fighting for that honor. You know, who can shove it up? You know, even you know more. But uh, she she's done a pretty good job, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say so too. And her comment was that um, that really gets me. She said it a couple times too. Um, Israel doesn't need America. America needs Israel, um, yeah. which is just a stunning statement for somebody running for the presidency of the United States. Um, I, yeah, I just, yeah. America needs Israel, you know, because they're such great allies. You know, they spy on the United States during the, the Cold War. They were selling American military technology to the Soviets. They uh, they bombed out an American naval vessel, the USS Liberty. They actually have free education, uh, higher education in their country. They've got a GDP per capita approaching what the United States is. They have basically a much better welfare and, and uh, social safety net. And they have all of these things. Yet America still has to give half of their foreign aid budget to Israel every year. You know, APAC. Uh, the American uh, Israel lobby group, which is quite interesting, is they they are uh, one of the biggest donors on both sides of the aisle in in presidential elections. And it's kind of funny because they're they are boasting on the fact that 95 percent of candidates that are backed by APAC are elected. And I read now and I don't like them, but the squad, which includes uh, Talib and ocasio Cortez and and a few others they're throwing a hundred million dollars behind primaries to have them unseated in their in their districts you know if you tried to say that the chinese or the russians or the north koreans were throwing a hundred million dollars into any american election it'd be called a scandal it would be called you know election interference but you know when israel does it it's they're the greatest allies that they they're the ones that are there to to serve american uh, you know, interests is just ludicrous. And and this is why these, these primaries on both sides are, are kind of ridiculous in my point, in my opinion, because it's just, it's a selection process, you know? And I actually, I made a video the other day where I uh, pretty much was, I'm pretty much convinced that Donald Trump is going to be chosen because of Israel's need at the moment to make covering for its, its, its onslaught, the Gaza Strip. So, you know, it's, they're not doing so good, actually. If you saw the news out of Israel out of today in the Gaza Strip, uh, 24 uh, Israeli soldiers, I think 21 of those were, were reservists, uh, killed on the Gaza Strip today. Um, they're, they're asking for a two month ceasefire in exchange for release of all the hostages, was another thing that I read. Uh, those aren't the things that winners propose, uh, Felix. No. <laughs> The one thing is it's this has also shattered the invincibility the, the the idea that the idf is invincible militarily and and one of the reasons why is because they're taking on hamas which is completely much more of a ragtag type militant organization compared to hezbollah in the north and yeah israel is it's uh it's it's army is made up of conscripts that serve two years or so they don't have a professional military 
most of these people are being called up from their jobs as secretaries or as bakers or as butchers or as you know candlestick makers and and none of them want to be there you know there there is um and none of them are really hardened military uh whereas and they don't have the same ideological zeal as people that are being kept in what they call an open air prison now i'm not for hamas and i'm not you know i i i do uh because i'm not a big fan of of islamic militancy uh of course but at the same time like this idea that israel is is omnipotent is i think being smashed and i think it, what, what's been the biggest change since october is you're seeing it come out that that average people are starting to realize who actually is running america right and, and people are finally seeing it and uh, i think that's been probably the biggest shift in the overton window and i don't even know how many years to be honest and you can even see it in the polling which some of the polling shocked me uh, especially uh, even early on where americans are like no we shouldn't be getting involved with this no don't send weapons to israel um yeah. and even among democrats and republicans um and you know i <laughs> You know, Netanyahu, of course, he's he's catching some shit. Uh, let me ask you this. This is something I haven't asked somebody in a while. Do, do you think that he let this attack happen? Oh, yeah, I absolutely think he let this attack happen. So there's there's all, all kinds of evidence that not only was it was Egypt, Jordan, and the intelligence agencies all across the Middle East were telling them that something large is coming. And I think what they're doing is they're taking this and allowing this to happen is they're what what else do you want to call it the final solution to the arab palestinian problem and they're basically pummeling gaza into a into a position where it's not going to be habitable anymore and they're already throughout the kisnet they're talking about you know these all of the arabs the palestinian arabs being relocated to western countries right and like to you know canada the us and the uk for example and just pretty much turning the entire place into a parking lot so it, it actually serves Israel's purpose to have allowed this to happen because they can finally rid themselves of this problem. And they're doing it with under the auspices and the backing of the United States. Now, if you take a look at the voting record at the UN and vetoes that the United States has thrown up, uh, you know, against literally the entire Security Council time and time again, it's, it's the United States stands alone in backing Israel and backing what they're doing. Now, if any other country, I mean, the United States and the West in general has lost all credibility, you know, in terms of what is the rhetoric it's been using uh, with regards to the conflict in the Ukraine about, you know, the, the right to resist and having, a, you know, the ability to have weapons in order to fight off the, uh, the aggressors and the invaders. It's, it's basically the, the West has lost all moral uh, ground that they've, they've even attempted to, to stand on. So, yeah, I think that this literally was allowed to happen and i think it was allowed to happen not only because netanyahu was already in a very politically tenuous situation but i think it's also because that israel can finally get rid of the palestinian problem well so, and, yeah and netanyahu's openly saying uh no two-state solution that they're not in favor of that any longer i did hear a theory put forward earlier that maybe they would try to set up some type of um uh puppet state uh in the west bank uh, and just leave Gaza basically as just like an open air prison, like you said. Um, I, I don't even know that that's feasible because there's a lot of uh, people in the West Bank that I don't think would go for that. <laughs> uh, well, they, yeah, yeah, they won't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't really see that as, as a feasible option. But um, what do you see being the, the, the turnout of this? I, I see basically, uh, I think that the Gazan people are going to be systematically removed from, from the Gaza Strip. I don't see how it can be in any other way because even prior to the, 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 the Israelis control the water, they control the fuel, they even control things like, and this was long before the, uh, the current fighting out broke out, like even things like concrete has to be approved by Israel and the rebuilding of that entire you know the entire area would take decades at this point they've destroyed it it's it's gone so these people are going to have a choice okay well do you want to live in tents in unsanitary conditions or you know we're going to coax our greatest allies in the united states the uk and canada to bring you into their countries and you can go live on welfare for the rest of your lives and have like 20 kids and a free house and it'll be paid for by the american taxpayer 
right? So um, I, I think I think the end the end game in this is to pretty much uh, eliminate. It's not eliminating Hamas. It's just eliminating the, the Gazan population. If, if you're looking at it honestly. Now we did mention the West Bank. What do you think? Um, you know they're going to do with that. I think that the West Bank. The one thing is 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 the the whole the one thing I will say is that the the Palestinians th th there is no Palestinian people. I mean they're just Arabs. Up until the 1990s, it was always referred to as the Arab Israeli problem. You know the the whole idea of the Palestinians being this 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 people. Uh, they never were. They were just Arabs living you know underneath different sort of you know Ottoman sultanates and different sort of, but there was never like a defined, there was never a, a Palestinian currency, a Palestinian uh, a parliament, a, anything that would denote a, a statehood. So I think that uh, the Palestinians in, they, they already have a, basically a homeland and it's called Jordan, right? So, I mean, if, if, if things, I mean, it, it, nobody wants them. If they did, you know, Egypt could have absorbed them. You know, the Arab world could have absorbed them. They, they've just, they're just a problem. For everybody in the region, so I think you know, in, in the end, probably what you'll see is Gaza being absorbed by Israel in, in the longer just term, annexed. and maybe annexed, just annexed, with its people being completely pushed out, and then probably the West Bank being absorbed by Jordan. It, it would be the only feasible, you know, thing. because the thing is, is, is the one problem is, is though Islamic people, I mean, once a part of uh, you know an inch of ground has been conquered by Muslims, that's Islamic for all time. So, I mean, they're even talking about how Spain and Portugal belong to the caliphate, belong to Islam, because it was part of the, you know, the Islamic caliphate up until 1492, I think it was the same year that yes. Columbus set sail for the, the new world. So will they give up now? It'll never stop. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Israel, was, Israel just won't make peace. And if they won't make peace, I mean, a two-state solution would be the only thing, and if it won't be a two-state solution, it has to be a one-state solution. And the one problem is, is that diaspora in countries like the United States, Canada, and and others, what they've done, they've kind of shot themselves in the foot because they have basically the long march through the institutions. They've taught all of these people throughout the Western world that white people are inherently evil, racists, and colonizers. But the problem is, is most people because you know no they've been taught for a long time judaism is not a race it's a religion israel is now seen by all of these these younger people throughout the west as a white colonizing apartheid state so they're kind of screwed which you know one way or the other and if they lose any sort of uh and and you're seeing it now that that people the only real support israel has anymore is in the boomers and once they're gone the support for israel is gone right so you know you're just talking about a generational shift you're even seeing in the united states a lot of of jews that see israel as a white colonizing state so i, I think that they're in real trouble if you want to know so do you trouble. think that that might be why there's such a um insane push now to kind of just deal with this now uh, because they know that demographically they're losing support amongst the youngsters um, and that in 10, 20 years they may not be able to to solve the problem the way they want to solve it um, and that they're just going all out right now. I think that's absolutely the case, and I think that's also the case with Russia's uh, fight in Ukraine because Russia has a, a demographic that's in the same trajectory, and Putin realized you know, it's either now or never. Right. And, and we're going to have to do this now or we're never going to be able to do it. So I think you're right. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. I think I think people are are definitely going to be. Uh, I would say, um, you know, and, and this is why I just watch American politics. I just not American politics. Every every the politics in every Western country is basically just kabuki theater at this point. So uh, I, I just, you know, the whole, oh, well, Donald Trump has got uh, the support and New Hampshire, but oh, Nikki Haley has these donors, and it's <laughs> it's just you know, give me some fucking popcorn, you know, because it's just it's all it's all a joke. I mean, even even the founding fathers of the United States warned about the idea of having political parties, right? And now you know the United States, as far as I can tell, is the only country that doesn't have viable third party candidates. And, and you know, we could talk about that later uh, about Bobby Kennedy Jr. Sure, um, where. There is a way for him to to the presidency, um, if you know we, we can talk about that later. But the United States, the fact that the the founding fathers warned against political parties, 
And now you've got like just basically two parties. That's it. Two. So um yeah, I, I just I, I just find it all just laughable at this point. Well, you, and Trump doesn't have any of the energy he had in 2016, that's for sure. You know, like like the whole internet behind him. I mean, everyone that sort of went and and was, you know, on his team as like the, the internet itself has been, you know, people have been thrown in jail for memes at this point. All of the social media is, is it's just incredible looking at 2016 versus 2020 and now 2024, the amount of censorship that's out there. You know, and this is all because of, you know, the, the politics of, of making sure those who are installed are installed according to, you know, the establishment desires. So, And you mentioned RFK Jr. Why not talk about him now? You know, uh, of oh, course, right. he's a huge Zionist uh, himself um, after he got rebuked for saying something mildly critically of, uh, critical of Israel. And then all of a sudden he's marching with Rabbi Shmuley and, and, uh, and, and all this stuff. Well, look at Elon Musk marching with right, Ben Shapiro. With ben Shapiro I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just... There really right. is no option, right? Like, I mean, they all do it. Like, it, it, it's not like there's somebody else out there. But yeah, well, go ahead. what I was going to say about uh, RFK Jr. is um, what he's he's angling toward right now is the fact that if no presidential candidate gets over 270 votes, in in then it goes it goes the to uh, the Congress for yeah. voting. And there's been a few presidents that this has gone this way. I think it was. Jefferson was voted in this way, and so was John Quincy Adams. Yes. And uh, basically, if, if no candidate can can get to the required number, it goes to the Congress for the vote. And and to be honest, I think um, yeah, he's a Zionist, but like honestly, show me a candidate that's not Zionist, you can. and uh, I'll give you a million dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like I, no, the, the the tail that wags America has been Israel for decades, and I think just I, I mean. Anyone with, you know, a casual observer can see that. But the problem is, is that, you know, this kind of conversation during previous to the Internet was basically you, you couldn't talk about it because no, because all of the media is owned by the same people. And now with the Internet, one of the things they're terrified of is people waking up to who's who's actually, you know, what is it? I think it was Voltaire is like, if you want to see who rules over you, look to see who you can't criticize. Right. So. Um, you're not going to find an American politician in any capacity that's not a Zionist. Now, as we said previously, I think that could be changing in, in the near future. I think that could change, uh, given the way, um, you know, the, the generational shift is happening and, and basically just the, the same sort of culture war that's tearing up the United States that was, was basically, you know, started by Israel and its, its minions and its co-religionists uh, within the institutions and in the media, it's coming back to bite them in the ass, right? As the United States tears itself apart, which it is. I mean, the United States at this time, I mean, you're living in Mexico right now, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah, I mean, like, it's almost like you can see it in a, in a much more laser-like fashion when you're outside of it and you're not yes. kind of surrounded by it. But the United States, and it's not just the United States, it's pretty much every single Western country, they're, they're literally, and, and people don't want to hear it, but there is no future unless there's some kind of gigantic sea, sea weather change in not only the media, the academia, but also the political system. And also just a lot of these people that want to just absolutely, you know, tear down every aspect of, of the country. I mean, you know, I remember seeing, you know, like right now, I mean, I know I, I was looking on your, your, your Twitter, you're a big football fan. I mean, how do you feel about, you know, the American national anthem at the next, I think it's the, they're, they're replacing it with the black national anthem, I mean, you know, I mean, you must have covered yes. that in your, 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 your thing, correct? Yes. Yes. We talked about it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I mean, like, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, I go to, I go to sports and I go to these things, but these are the same sort of things they're doing where Disney is remaking all of the old cartoons, but they're making, you know, uh, Ariel from the, what's it? The. The Little Mermaid, they're making her a redhead. She's black. They're making Snow White uh, some kind of, I don't know, she's some sort of mystery meat thing. They're, they're changing all of these things. So, so the youth, they, their first thing they grow up with is they, they're, they're growing up with a completely changed cultural dichotomy. And, and I think it's, it's, it's in every aspect of it. So like you've got, you know, like in, 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 in Europe, they, they have soccer matches after St. Floyd of the Fentanyl 
you know, when he, when he was, uh, you know, he had his drug overdose. They had all of the soccer matches in, in, in Europe. They all had to take the knee for St. St. Floyd, you know, and this is, it, it's being exported. So I, I don't know, dude, I think that uh, we're living in, we're living in Roman collapse at this point. And I don't think it's going to change until people feel an economic bite to it, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Until and, the uh, breads and circuses aren't until the bread. Until and they're circuses, over. Yeah. 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 Nobody will uh, do anything. And, and, and I'll say this, of course, I, I do live in Mexico here in the Yucatan Peninsula, Merida, uh, safest place in Mexico, actually. Uh, one sure. of the safest places in North America. Uh, now, not all of Mexico is safe, I'll, I'll say, but uh, uh, this is, a, this is a, a lovely place to live, paradise, basically. Um, and I remember growing up, and I, of course, I had a political science degree, and they made me take two semesters of Spanish, and I had my girlfriend do most of the work because I said, why the fuck would I ever need to know Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> and now I wish, well, maybe that would have done a little bit of that work because uh, my Spanish would be a lot better. Um, but um, I don't see, uh, you know, I, I caught a little bit of heat uh, about this on Twitter, but um, I don't really have a desire to return to the United States. Um, uh, you know, oh, I, I, get heat of, I get heat of being an expat all the time, yeah. all the time. Yeah. And you, it's never, people are... Yeah, they're never going to you know, get off of that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, like, um, why would you want to? You know, I don't you know uh, what to to pay more money for less services and to still be ruled by Zionists at the same time. Like, I, I don't I, I don't see um, a, a, a benefit to it uh, really at all. Uh, and yeah, and I get the same shit. It's like, oh, no, go back and fight for America and this and yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. and it's like, uh, no. <laughs> Why? Why would I want to do that? When's the last time they fought for me, or just the any average American citizen? Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just yeah, I, I get the same thing. Well, you gotta go and fight for your home and fight. Yeah, you want to do that where where basically <clears throat> the entirety of your country is being overrun anyway. I mean, fuck it. I'd just say absorb Mexico at this point. You know, like there's, there's, it's not going to stop. I mean, and and it's not happening just in the United States. It's happening throughout the Western world, right? right. So, I mean, yeah, why fight for something when you've got, and, and, you know, you've got the government against you, you've got the judiciary against you, you've got the media against you, you get deplatformed, demonetized, debanked. If you say anything about these things, you know, and then people say, oh, well, you got to still, yeah, and fight for what? You know, like fight for what? Yeah, yeah what are you it, fighting for? Yeah, exactly. There's nothing left to fight for, in my opinion. So, I mean, it's, it's people have to understand it's that bad. It's not blackpilling people. It's not even trying to blackpill people. It's that bad. I mean, we're we're literally watching as as the barbarians break down the gates. Uh, you know, we're Romans having orgies and watching chariot races while the Visigoths are are burning and looting our cities. Right. So. And I lived yeah. in Mexico for um, a, a, almost about a year and a half now, and. Um, you know, I live in the, the Mayan part. Like I said, very safe here. You know, there are some problems in Mexico. Don't get me wrong. But um, I, I noticed that um, Mexico has a real culture, though. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, like they, they have, a, um, in my opinion, more of, of a authentic Mexican culture, Mexican way of life uh, than America does. Um, you see America's just this hodgepodge of, 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 of nonsense and, and, you know, Zionist control and, you know, mixing from it's, it's not that I'm like totally, I'm not one of these, like shut down all immigration forever, obviously well, neither I'm in Mexico, neither am I. but, but like, it's not even a real country anymore in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. Mexico mm -hmm. is like they, yeah. Mexico has its own culture, uh, and uh, you you just don't see the same things here. It, there's actually more respect for for family and conservative values, which is insane to me. Almost in Mexico, like uh, you go to a restaurant, they have they have places for your kids to play and and, and you know um, and stuff like that. In America, it's just um, completely been taken over by the globalist. Uh, I guess we'll say capitalist, if you want to be nicer, um, and. It's it's pretty much nicer in every way here in the Yucatan, um, mm -hmm. and and the, and the thing that really strikes me is that, is that they have a real culture here in Mexico, uh, and I don't really feel like we have a real culture in America anymore. 
No, I, I would absolutely agree with that. And, you know, it's I, I said this to somebody the other day. I think I'd rather be a minority in a in a country well where I am, more a civilized country, but one where I don't I don't get shit on every day. I'd rather be a minority than being a minority in my own country, which I am pretty much, right? You know, the city I grew up in, you know, when I finished my my high school, I think it was like ninety seven percent people that looked like me spoke my language were the same religion. And I think it's probably less than 20% now, you know, and that's just in one lifetime. And I'm not even that old yet. You know, I'm not retired. I'm not, you know, a geriatric yet. You know, I mean, you know, I finished school about 20 years ago and um, I don't know. It's just, it's just scary. Like the, the, the rate of population change is not to be against immigration because I'm not either. And, you know, and I live in, in Asia, it's, I don't, I don't care what color you are. Uh, it's just that our societies are are fundamentally broken, and 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 it's going to take. I, I don't think they can be saved at this point. And, you know, a point of what's happening right now is it's it's pretty much tantamount to when European colonization destroyed the Native Americans. But this time, it's not just Europeans doing it; it's the entire country. But the difference is, is when Europeans came, they were settlers carving out a civilization from from nothing right people now when they arrive you know they're arriving into welfare states and and just sitting on handouts and you know it's kind of interesting because i just made a video i released it a couple of hours ago and it's on the the topic not only of the chinese diaspora but on a recently uh so it was a secret so there's this this guy his name was andrew marshall and he was at his retirement at 93 was considered the oldest federal worker ever to work in the federal government but what he was is he not really many people knew him but he was pretty much the brains behind the um the pentagon and the intelligence services and he they they, they had a, a we don't know who the author of this particular um study was but because his name was redacted because it was released under a freedom of information yeah. request but it's 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 a book length study but it's talking about how chinese uniculturalism makes the country much more resilient to stress tests than somewhere that is multicultural like the united states but you know the idea is that a place like the united states is it's every person for themselves right and and it just like you're saying there's there's no community anymore you know people I've talked to other people, you know, things like, you know, community organizations. You know, when I was a kid, you know, there was this old widow. Her name was Rita, and she lived on the block. And, you know, when autumn would come around, you know, she was like, she was like, the, you know, the, the, the neighborhood battle axe, right? Yeah. Her kids had moved out. Her husband had passed away. So she was kind of the, the neighborhood enforcer. So she, she has kids out there. She's like, how are your kids? Get over here right now. And, and and she'd have a bunch of rakes. She's like, we're going to clean this straight up right now. And all the kids would do it because they were kind of like, okay. You know, it was just kind of the way <laughs> things right. worked. And and now I would imagine kids would probably spit on her and throw tomatoes at her. Or beat her up. You know? <laughs> or beat her up, yeah. <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know, just all of these sort of things that, like you were talking about children, you know, even things, you know, like kids, kids' activities in families and stuff. It's just... It doesn't really happen anymore you know a lot of my kids uh, my friends with kids you know I, I kind of lament because i i just watch them you know they just they don't want to deal with their kids so they just hand them like a, an ipad to play games with and and uh, you know a lot of them don't even join things like little league anymore you know they're just they're stuck behind a screen you know and not doing like you know the normal things bike riding um you know going out in the forest yeah you know hunting whatever you know like they're not doing those sort of things anymore so anyway it's 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 getting all the way back circling back it's all political theater in my opinion but now um i, I couldn't agree with you more uh and when i was a kid you know i was riding my bike all over town mm -hmm. uh i played a little league uh we had yeah, all these organizations exactly and uh exactly or for example even enough. even go to i don't know if, did you have any professional sports in in your area like you know going it's going to like watch a, a hockey game or a, a football yeah, game or a so baseball memphis game? uh before they got the grizzlies um the reason i'm a kansas city chiefs fan is because that was the closest like uh team basically to us until the titans got there uh and then the titans went to nashville and i'm from memphis so fuck nashville that's a long story um so i always stayed a chiefs fan uh but yeah we had 
we would well, go watch Memphis Tigers. We'd go watch professional sports, uh, well, or just well, like sport, high, I, school sports, it's, high school sports, high school games. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the old, I don't mind because, like, when I go, when I was back, my brother lives. He lives in in Seattle, and you know, he's got three boys. And you know, he can't. Have, we can't. Have, we. I went to a Mariners game with him, and we got nosebleeder seats, and they were like seventy dollars plus tax for nosebleed seats in in just you know out there. And he's got three boys. Try to imagine. So you've got you've got your parking, and say you got four tickets for for you know your three sons. Plus, you know, concessions, you know, like, well, you know, maybe popcorn, I don't know, hot dogs, whatever. You're talking like a $300 night to take your kids to see a sporting event now. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just, it's wildly out of the price league of, of most people who want to bring their kids. And, and then what you see is when I was at, at this game, you saw almost nobody under the age of 20, you know, like in, in, in the stands. It was, I went to the last year's, um, uh, season opener it was the Mariners versus the Houston Astros and it was a fun it was a fun time but you know it, these things are all out of the price I mean you know I saw this thing that the United States now with the inflation I don't know what it's like in Mexico but the inflation price is here on everything Mexico, but not quite as hard but um, yeah well I was yeah. talking to my brother and and I guess you know they use have you ever heard of the the idea of the the Big Mac um price so like they use the Big Mac set, the Big Mac menu. I don't know how you call it uh, in in combo uh, Memphis. Whatever, yeah. yeah, combo, the Big Mac combo, and they use that as a price guide on 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 living costs in any particular area. And I was watching how Joe Biden had to get behind. He was really upset because the New York Times was talking about in uh, cities like Seattle, San Francisco, the the more expensive ones, New York. Big Mac combos were like hitting sixteen dollars, you know, for for just like a fry, a coke, and a Big Mac. And he was lamenting that they're oh, they're, it's going to get cheaper, whatever. But I asked my, you know, I said to my brother, I was, he's, he's like, it's like fifteen bucks for like a, you know, you go to Jack in the Box, Taco Bell, any of them, you know. He's and he's and he's, you know, it's not that's even for one person. Even, that's for one person, <laughs> and, it, and it's goy slop too. Yeah, right. You're not even getting a decent meal. You well, that's know, what I try doing. to explain to people. Um, you know, of course, Mexico known for its, its great food, but um, I one of the reasons, uh, selfishly maybe in this case, I, I have no desire to go back to the U.S. I can go after the show, which I will do, buy a torta, which is a Mexican sandwich, um, al pastor, all fresh ingredients, all fresh fruit is so cheap here in Mexico, yeah. and because mm -hmm. I mean it's plentiful, uh, and I can literally buy like a stacked ass sandwich for two dollars and 91 cents american dollars to convert you probably to couldn't over. even get a fucking package of gum for that now that's what i'm you saying know, it, yeah that's like yeah. a bag of doritos if that yeah, exactly. in america if, yeah, if yeah. that if, if that, that. Yeah. and um it's like why would i want to go back to that like i can sit here and that's just the sandwich you know i could get a uh, mm -hmm. a coke uh or a beer mm -hmm. if i wanted or anything else uh and you could have a whole meal for like eight dollars yeah, absolutely. Uh, and like you, you just can't do that in America anymore. I don't really see the benefit uh, to living in America. Well, it's the, overpriced. All of the benefits, it's just not all worth of the it. benefits, all of the benefits that Western countries had when you and I were growing up are gone. Right, and and they're gone because of inflation, high taxation, and 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 just the the cost of living. So I mean, if you if you try to plow in, I, I'm not sure what the numbers are crossing into the United States illegally per year, but I think it's in the millions. It has to be. Yeah. Right. Um, if you have that plus legal immigration, but you're not tying your immigration to housing. So let's say you have a million people coming in, or let's just say you have a hundred people coming into your country a year, but you're only building 10 houses. What that does is it, it, it jacks up. I mean, if you look at housing, if you had bought a house in, uh, I, I'm not really familiar with Memphis. So we'll just go with, uh, we'll go with Seattle. You know, like in if you bought a house in 2004, you know, a single dwelling house, you know, in a fairly decent area, you know, like, you know, not not like Bill where Bill Gates lives, but, you know, in an all right house, it probably would have cost you a quarter million dollars. Yeah. That same house now would probably cost you one point six, one point eight, two million. Right. And but but salaries haven't gone up. So it, 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 the knock on effect is one of the great things about living in North America previously compared to, say, Europe is is for example gas prices were low food prices were low and and living costs were low right comparatively speaking but you also lived in a developed country where you could get consumer goods right but all of the consumer goods have been outsourced taxes have gone up housing has gone up 
and it's had a knock-on effect. So it's like when when you told me you moved to Mexico, I was like, I, I think we talked about it about a year ago or something, or yeah. maybe not that long. And and you said you know it was a good idea, and I said, yeah, I think so. I don't see a problem with it. You know, I mean, you were actually one of the guys of... who inspired me because I was like, you know what, I'm one of those guys who's like, man, you know what, America, I can't leave America. I need to stay there. And what's mm -hmm. the benefit? And I got to traveling, and I, I traveled around Europe first, uh, and went to Portugal famously twice. Uh, went to Madrid. Yeah, we'll talk uh, about that to, in a minute. Yeah. Went to Rome, and 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 I and I love those places. Uh, and I, I looked into immigrating into Portugal, actually, and it's easier to do than, than some of the other European countries, but it's a little bit difficult. Um, in Mexico, it's not difficult at all. You just show them you make a certain amount of money per month, uh, and they give you a temporary residency. And then once you have that for uh, four years, you get permanent residency. And then if you learn Spanish after one more year, you can become a Mexican citizen. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's how it works in Mexico. Um, but one of the things that inspired me was, was somebody like you, I used to think, you know, traveling around the world, living in these different countries would almost be something impossible for me to do. Uh, right. Like, like how could I even do something like that? And it's not impossible. I feel people listening to me now think it's impossible. Uh, yeah, but it's, but not. it's not, no, it's really not. It's really not like I, I, you know, kudos to you for, you know, doing it because I mean, it, it really isn't that hard to do. You know, and, yeah. and if you don't like your situation, change it because the only one who can is you. And I'm not saying it's not for everyone, obviously. You know, if you've got like three kids or you're divorced and you've got to pay alimony and child support, I mean, it, it becomes impossible. You know, and these uh, are the traps. The, the it one, can the still one, be possible, but it makes it, it a little bit harder. Possible, yeah. but the, one, the one thing I would say is, <laughs> is, is, is what you have to do in order to make your life better is, is make sure – you're not recklessly spending and putting everything in into credit and debt. You know, get, that is that is the biggest hook. And I think that that's why you have mass immigration, especially in countries like Canada, Australia, the UK. It's it's not for the same reasons as it is in the United States, but it is it's it's to import debt slaves because it's the same thing as like say Netflix. Netflix, who's ever going to get Netflix is got it already, right? It's they they their 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 market is is saturated. Right. Where debt, the debt markets are saturated and they need new debt slaves within the system, you know, um, and I think that that's the, the key thing, you know, you know, live within your means, which is the problem for a lot of people because of, of credit. People have a human instinct. It's instant gratification. And I mean, they use social psychologists and things like video games because of our hunter gatherer past. We're forgers and we want to get as much as we possibly can at any time. And, and they use these things to, to, to trap people into debt. And once you're into that debt slavery, I mean, that, that is where it kind of like can, can really, really hurt you. The one good thing about, you know, leaving a country is, you know, I've had friends of mine that have left the U S and they, they basically just, you know, they had student loans and then they just got as many credit cards as they could exactly took out as many do. loans as they possibly could and just, just left, That's exactly you know, what just you do. never paid it, you know, just, you know, got like 20 credit cards, had, you know, you know, I read an article in the New loans. York Times about 15 years ago, uh, and it was this guy. He was a liberal, and he said, uh, I, I'm not paying my student loan debt back, and I haven't, never will. Uh, and he gave a guide about how to do it. Uh, and he said, yep. get as many credit cards as you can. Pay those credit cards. Don't get behind on those uh, because the credit card companies don't really give a fuck. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, keep your credit that way. Um, and then just don't pay back your student loans. They're not yep. owed that money, uh, in Kiosman my opinion. Sent $3 and here's a super chat, and I'll ask you, so of your one, one pause What is here. your prediction of how the um, EU is going to turn out? Sorry, will it be collapse me, or so an even more sec. tyrannical centralized government? Um, how will the Ukraine war affect this? Now, now let me read this, and, and I'm glad because I, I'm not going to keep you all in mind. I know it's early there, uh, maybe about. Oh, 10, it's actually it's okay now. It was, it's okay. That's why I came in late. It's actually, it's, it's, it's 11:30 in the morning, so it's okay. Okay, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, Kiosk Man said, um, uh, "Hey, BP, long time watcher of your content. What is your prediction of how the EU is going to turn out? Will it collapse, or and even wait? Will it, will it be collapse or?" an even more tyrannical centralized government how will the ukraine war affect this okay uh two two things on that um i think the ukraine and it, what's happened in the in the united in in the uk excuse me the eu 
is I think the Ukraine might be the death nail of, of the Union. And now hear me out. What the Union has done has, it has allowed American hegemony or, or hegemony or however you want to pronounce it. Some people say hegemony. Some people he, he's It's the global hegemon. And yes, yes. the EU has allowed itself to become vassal states to the point where it it allowed American foreign policy that's that that has been just military adventurism since the end of the Cold War. I mean, just invading countries, toppling governments, and then not having any sort of clue of what to do next. You know, just bomb that country, bomb this one, take down this government. And what they were doing is is you know, Russia had said a hundred times, our red line is Ukraine. You know, our red line is Ukraine. We are not going to accept NATO expansion into Ukraine. All we'd like, and they they they've had they had several different uh, accords. The Minsk II Accord being the one that would settle the problem down. So there was a U.S. backed color revolution in 2014 that toppled the legitimate Ukrainian government and installed the 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 governments that we see now ending with Zelensky. That the previous government was you know, not pro-Russian, it was more being a bridge between Russia and uh, the West, where they could benefit from being in their geopolitical position. But, you know, Zelensky's like, no, no, and I don't want to bring up his his uh, ethnicity, because it seems whenever those, those groups of people get into power, slabs die by the millions, right? But, I mean, the whole war has seen, you know, the EU say, we're not going to take any Russian energy, which pretty much has completely tanked the entire economy of of the EU. You're seeing, uh, so Germany, which was the industrial engine of the continent, they're seeing like their their entire industry being hollowed out. It's it's just dying. So that there's the the second largest party that was only begun in 2017 after Angela Merkel opened the doors to millions of these boat people and these these migrant crises and just just flooded the continent. And then the EU demanding that other countries take them where they're not wanted. They're not wanted in Poland. They're not wanted in, they're not really wanted anywhere because unfortunately when they arrive, they suck up social safety net and, and money. I mean, there's, there's been studies in places like Norway, Sweden, uh, throughout the EU that, you know, these migrants, they're taking up 60 to 70% of social benefit costs, right? And, and none of them get jobs eight years later. The United States bombs out the, the one, you know, the Nord Stream pipeline into Germany. Everyone just sucks it up and sucks the dick. And the second largest party that was begun because of repercussions of the migrant uh, situation in uh, in Germany and just basically the gutting of the industry and the, the falling standard of living is called the Alternative for Germany or the AFD, yes. the Alternative for Deutschland. They're in second place. It's a brand new party and they're just growing strength from strength. And uh, the, the the German government doesn't know what to do, so they're trying to talk about about banning them. Yeah. They're the second most popular party in the country now. I mean, they're polling they're polling higher than this the the Christian the CDU, which is the the current chancellor uh, Angela Merkel's. She was part of the CDU, the current yes. uh, Olaf yeah. Schultz, and and they're polling better than them. So they said, well, we're going to have to ban them. We're going to have to ban them. I mean, because we have to save democracy by banning political parties that are popular. And uh, the the chairman of, of the AFD came out just yesterday and said that unless the European Union is fundamentally changed, that when they when they gain a large enough majority in the Bundestag, they are going to basically do the exact same thing as the United Kingdom and and Brexit. Like there's a growing consensus within Germany that uh, that that the EU is now basically just completely defunct in its ability to which would be the, the end of the eu basically which is yeah without the franco german yeah yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, done yeah, yeah. yeah so that would be that would be my answer to that question i think the eu unless it goes back because i mean the eu you have to remember when it was sold to the european people it was sold as the european economic community the eec so it would be like you know free trade but we're not going to like tell you you know who you can have in your country who you can't we're not going to tell you the size of bananas and how they have to be this yellow we're not going to tell you like we're not going to like take the money from the taxpayers of of the netherlands and give it to you know serbia or croatia i should say so i think the the eu is in a lot of trouble to be honest with you 
Uh, now, what do you think about uh, Ukraine? We mentioned a little bit uh, Ukraine, Russia. How do you see that thing uh, ending up if it ever ends? Uh, I, I think it's in its last throes at this point. You know, um, the United States, as I said, you know, I think it's Henry Kissinger who just died recently. He said that it's it's dangerous to be America's friend, but it's I'm sorry, it's dangerous to be America's enemy, but it's absolutely deadly to be its friend. And that was Henry Kissinger, right? You know, former Secretary of State under Nixon, but, you know, elder statesman, right? Um, the United States, they pumped in a lot of money into our proxy war. There, there are no men left. I mean, they're throwing people with, with HIV, with mental problems. I even saw people amputated. They're throwing women, they're throwing women. boys, they're throwing yeah. elderly men. To fight the Russians, there's just there's just no people left. There's not enough people it, in Ukraine. Yeah, as I said. No, no. <laughs> I mean, at the start of this war, there were 40 million people. There are only 28 million left, right? At, you know, because so many have died, but mo a lot of them have fled. So you've got all of the young women have fled. Right, all of the young women have fled to to Western Europe to, and most of them are in relationships or sucking dick or whatever. They're not going back. You know, they're not going back. You know, prior to this war, Ukraine was one of the poorest. It is one of the poorest, the most corrupt country in. In Europe, but so you've got you've got an entirely destroyed economy, to the point where the United States taxpayer is now paying the salaries and the pensions of the people in Ukraine, because there's just the, the entire economy has been destroyed. The infrastructure has been destroyed. All of the generation of young men are dead. All of the young women are left. I mean, what kind of future does that country have? And and I think the will to fight. I mean, I'm even re reading that that uh, battalion commanders are 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 disobeying orders from Zelensky. I think the thing will be over, not not within the next couple of months, but by the end of this year, it's going to be over with a resounding victory where it's it's probably one of the most useless wars that have happened in the last 50 years. Just didn't need to happen. There was already a peace deal on the table in in March 2022. And, you know, it was Boris Johnson walked in and told Zelensky, no, 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 we're not going to do this. We're going to fight. And all it was the same, like they would have, they had pretty good, all it was, 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 we don't want you joining nato and we can work on on these provinces you know like in the donbass and we can figure that out you know just you know but but this is our key thing and now i think they're just going to be rolled up into a rump state and into a failed state i think it's going to be a european failed state so yeah it's done you know but talking going back you were talking about uh, your trip to portugal yeah. that was actually getting into a kind of different conversation that was kind of when i stopped uh, in this sector because i, I remember there they sent some sort of goon to, to to beat you up in the street yeah they did uh that and, and and i remember watching that and i was hearing like women screaming and cars going by well yeah because they and, grabbed this woman and threw her into traffic she had a concussion yeah, and yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, and so so i i was at the time i was still like i think this is like i i think this is when you were having your fallout with warski i don't even know who's on whose side at this point because it changes yeah. daily because i'm True. not really in the commentary co community and I've been on his show a bunch of times, just like because you know he was with that guy Kyler, and uh, and, and I just told him I said you, you you do realize this is dangerous, you know, putting other people in harm's way for 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 you know laughs and shits and giggles and beating people up because of stuff that's said on the internet. And uh, he blocked me on Twitter. I haven't talked to him ever since, you know, because I just told him, do you really think this is a good idea to be going in? To foreign countries and beating people up for laughs and giggles on the internet where other people potentially could be harmed all right and, and it wasn't right. just me she could have been killed she actually well, that's had a my concussion whole and had stitches in her head and was thrown in mm. front of moving traffic like uh, it was actually she got hurt worse than i did i just walked out of the hospital because they were taking too long and i was like whatever mm. they were still stitching up her skull she had a concussion yeah. and, a, and a split skull uh um, yeah so this is when i i, I was just like uh, this is kind of when i sort of distanced because i just like you know i just was i thought somebody was going to get killed at the end of all of this you know um and 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 people thought it was shit and giggles so i, I don't even know who half of these people are and, I, and it seems like alliances change and and mm. whatnot and i don't want to, but then, I, so I, I mean, I've known you for years, right? So I mean, and we never have problems. So I don't mind coming on your show um, at all. Yeah, and I appreciate but, you know, it. And, and and I think we have a little bit of higher dialogue here on my show than you would have with Worski. Uh, no offense, of course, to Worski. Uh, well, but, no, well, the last the last <laughs> I saw of him is, is 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 was he not in rehab again or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he was in rehab a couple months ago and.
And now he said he's been clean of coke for 60 days. I don't know. He's got this 800-pound uh, Canadian that he sits up there next to and, and grips with. And, uh, yeah, that, that's that's kind of that's kind of his thing. Um, yeah. And, I mean, I mean, let's face it, he was never the highest IQ uh, a guy. Uh, you know, I do the silly stuff. I do the drama stuff. But, uh, you know, I'm a political science major. Uh, went to school for that. I love geopolitics. I love politics even if it is kabuki theater i can't help it i'm a, i'm addicted like you said i guess yeah. out of old hat i just can't help following it um but i, I feel like we kind of have a different show here on the kill stream yes we do the drama yes we do silly stuff too uh but i like to talk about serious issues and and actual you yeah. know um uh, world affecting things uh and so that's why i've always enjoyed having you on the show for one um, well yeah i mean I, I think i'm probably a bit of a different kind of guest i would imagine that's for sure um yeah. like i mean i i saw you were putting stuff out about the the boogie boogie yeah two, yeah, yeah. Seven, that was five, part of the seven drama stuff yeah yeah well, yeah 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 well, i mean i watched that thing that documentary well, it was fake. Turns out, it was turns yeah. out it was fake yeah yeah I, I just thought to myself i mean this guy he, you know he probably made millions uh in his thing and he's 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 living on like 20 bucks or something i thought it was kind of like what you know what are you talking about how is this even possible you know like um so it turns out like you're saying it's all fake so i don't know but i guess i guess the big thing since you and i talked is uh gonzalo yes i'm glad you, know? you mentioned yeah. that because that was the next thing i was going to bring up and me and yeah. gonzalo uh we're good friends actually uh and gave me a lot of counsel and um kind of saw him um there for a while i guess is a little bit of a, a father figure uh you know mm. he had a lot of good counsel and he's, he was kind of an asshole like me uh mm. i ain't gonna lie uh but uh we had a lot of good times and of course we had a falling out and we were you know pretty nasty back and forth towards each other i'm not gonna lie and uh he sent somebody a message while he was in ukraine and he was scared to death that i was gonna like start talking about him on the show and like bring attention to where he was in ukraine and that they would come pick him up and actually do what ended up happening to him now of course i wouldn't do that i didn't want to see gonzalo dead like this is internet shit talk right like yeah. uh, matter of fact i wish we could have made it up uh that actually is one of my big regrets uh in my career uh because it was silly to start off with right uh, i really? wish i could have had another conversation with coach uh to just you know man that shit's silly uh and the whole time uh, i wanted him to be freed um and of course he he wasn't he he, he died uh, and i did a joke thing last year when they said he died and i was like celebrating but it turned out to be i was doing a memorial for him actually but i was doing it in an asshole way basically mm -hmm. uh and then this year um you know a lot of people r really like um take this shit so seriously um that they're like yeah i hope he dies in prison and he's a scumbag and he did all this and that and oh, I'm like, dude, oh, he's in I ukrainian know, prison well, free this man he's yeah, an american people, citizen like what the yeah, fuck like, i know i saw stuff all like all across the internet it's like oh he said mean things about women i hope yeah. he fucking dies or if he gets raped to death in a ukrainian prison or these things because you know he he said you know women are not uh women are are, are be bad you know and uh and i was just like they you know, are coach, but you know, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I'll be honest with, with your audience. I talked to coach a lot and, uh, I mean, we did streams a lot and, sure. and I, and I met him, I knew him. And, um, the I one thing, too. I met him too. The I one thing him. I would say though, is that, that, you know, one of the things, I mean, I told him time and time again, that he should get out of Ukraine if he's going to talk the way he was, because I said, yes. you know, they're going to come after you and they're going to come after you with a sledgehammer. And people were even talking about how they remember him yelling me down for this stuff and, and when we talked privately you know he, what he said was i have to see this thing through right and i was like why you know and and he never really gave a concrete answer and it's really quite sad i'm talking to his cousin right now and it seemed like he had a pretty bad relationship with his father and you know but he's got two young kids and i'm, I'm trying to get his sister through his cousin because it just seems like the family his father's in chile his sister's in north carolina right but i mean i don't want to get involved but i'm trying to get and his wife's in ukraine I'm trying to get his sister to, while there's still some momentum, maybe starting up a, a, a give, send, go for his kids yes. or something, right? Yes. Uh, but I, I want nothing to do with the actual collecting or anything. I'm just thinking like, no, maybe because then they'll like blame yourself. you if anything goes wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm but the I'm thinking way. like, yeah, like yeah. people such as yourself, me, and anyone. I would who definitely knew get him, behind that. Uh, you know, like that that we could just put the word out once. 
And I'm thinking it's probably, I don't imagine that the Ukraine would even allow, because one of the things when I do did a give, send, go for something else, I had to do it out of like they, certain countries they don't allow. Right. And, and right. I had to do it through a U.S. bank account. Yeah. Um, and uh, I couldn't do it here where I am. So I was thinking like probably it'd have to go through his sister. So I'm in touch with this cousin right now, and I'm, you know, and, and I'm. And gonna... it would be good to get it started somewhat soon while there's soon. some momentum behind it. Like, that's what I mean. Uh, while the, while the iron is, uh, that's, a, that's a bad way to put it. But yeah, momentum not. Um, so I was thinking the same thing. So yeah, just I'll I'll keep in touch and just keep your and, keep and your please audience do. Play. And I and I said a lot of bad things about Coach. He said a lot of bad things about me too. Mm. I, this is the internet, man. Like this is you know drama, shit, talk, geopolitics mm. too. We have oh serious, yeah, yeah. It's just, we have it's serious internet, interviews like, too. Yeah. We we said a lot of bad things about each other. I did not want Gonzalo Lira to die in a Ukrainian mm. prison cell. I was advocating mm. for him to be free that entire time. It's an absolute disgrace that the Biden administration let him die over there uh, oh, what you actually really want to put it into perspective is that you know that a year previously they had that tranny uh britney griner who's a man i've seen it i've seen it topless playing basketball it's a dude it's not yeah. just a lesbian it's a dude that's a dude and it was in a hostile country it was in a hostile country russia, russia yeah. and it was moving drugs across borders right well, she knew she was and, doing and by they the way moved, she snuck they, in a vape pen they traded an international arms dealer for this this tranny the lord of war basically player. yeah 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 exactly 100%. literally the lord of war yeah, yeah exactly the lord of war this international fucking arms dealer that was feeding conflicts throughout the third world and they traded that guy with how much blood on his hands i don't know but a lot and they traded that guy for this tranny Whereas they had basically all they would have had to have done is, is picked up the phone and, say, and said, okay, bitch, Zelensky, you want your money this month so you can buy your yacht? You know, you want to have that, that, that mansion in Tel Aviv? You want to, you want to be able to expand the one in, in Florida? Give our guy back right now. Click. Done. That's all it would have taken, right? Because the Ukraine is completely a welfare state dependent on American aid, right? So the idea that... Um, that they should be allowed as as a as a as a basically a welfare state to to execute an american citizen just it it's it, it's it's disgusting and people really need to remember that that this was not only carried out by the Zelensky regime but it was aided and abetted by the biden regime that they they literally that's allowed right. an american to be an american citizen a born american citizen murdered in ukraine for his opinions on youtube and i do believe he was murdered i don't believe the pneumonia well i, I hate to say uh, this because i i've been i've been seeing like reports that are coming out on telegram on russian and ukrainian that it wasn't just the conditions that he were in that that led to his death because nobody's nobody this is another thing his body hasn't been repatriated to the united states it's still sitting in a morgue in in if it's even in a morgue right now in ukraine so the body hasn't been repatriated but there's talk that uh, medical examiners are saying it looks like he was burnt and tortured to death on top of being like just the, the elements for, for months and months and months, you know, living in a Ukrainian jail in the winter, you know, and then getting pneumonia. I mean, it, 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 oh, they, I don't know if you saw that that uh, creature, uh, Sarah Ashton Chirillo, that's yes. actually- Oh, she acted all again. sad. He acted all sad afterwards. Yeah. And, oh, it's so sad that this happened yeah. and he didn't get it. But it was, it, it, was, it was so behind trying to help him get killed. And, and they said, well, well, he was a smoker. Yeah, he smoked two packs a day. <laughs> Which yeah. is not true. He only started he smoking again during when the conflict, uh, and he smoked a bit. But you're not going to fucking die in, in a, you know, going from- even when he was at the Hungarian border, which was in July, right? He was, it was in July. He was fine when he was trying to get out, when he was on bail. And he tried, which was kind of like I thought was a really stupid move, you know, broadcasting over the internet your intentions to cross a, an international border. Well, it was they, one of the most legendary things I've ever seen, but it wasn't the true. smartest thing I've ever seen. Not the uh, smartest thing. But my point was, is, is in July, in July, he was fine. Right. So, and that was, no, sorry, that was in the end of August. So, September, yeah, October, August, November, yeah. December. So, you go four months where you're in fine physical health to supposedly dying of pneumonia. And uh, no, it was, it was the cigarettes. Well, you know what, smart Alec? I don't imagine he was smoking very much in prison. <laughs> right. 
No, I don't um, think there are many Marlboros there. And you, no, Ukrainian exactly. prison, by the, by the way, Mexican prison, also not a good place to be. But uh, Ukrainian prison, even worse than that. Oh, oh I, uh, I can't even imagine the worst because I was trying to explain to my friend what my 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 impression of a Ukrainian prison was, and I, I was saying try to imagine a Thai jail without the the warmth, and then also with scary scary like Russian and Ukrainian gangs inside. And you being an American and not speaking any of the language and try to imagine what that sort of prison environment would be like. And and then, oh, yeah, uh, he died because he smoked. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought the whole thing was was just retarded. Um, and, and it's just it's I don't know, I, I you know, not being political theater, but I mean, and, and politicians, one of the things is that they're never held accountable for what they do ever, ever. You know, they just get out of prison, they get out of prison, they get out of office. And then they go on to work in the private sector for those that they were meant to regulate previously, and they become millionaires. You know, I read that when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton got out of out of the White House in 2000, they were basically broke from all of the the lawyer fees, the legal bills, yeah, the legal bills from you know all the women that that Bill was putting <laughs> his thingy into, right. right? And and you know, within five years, they were they were like multi millionaires. You know, like like in the, now I think they're in the hundreds. I don't know what you'd call a person who's worth like 300 million, but that's multi hundred millionaire, if that's even a word. But I mean, you know, and the same with Barack Hussein Obama. You know, this guy literally came from from absolutely nowhere, and now he has like a massive compound in Hawaii. Now, where does his money come from, right? So, he also I sent three dollars. I have another BP. question. How do you see the fallout from the Gaza war? Uh, and Is I'll, there any I'll chance it sparks this. a pan Arabian and, movement? And I'll wrap it up on BP Gaza. Thoughts or on, on Gaza, China's coming demographic collapse in a few okay. decades. Um, but yeah, the whole thing with Gonzalo Lear, that should not be allowed to be forgotten. The United States could have had him out with one phone call. Exactly. Exactly. One phone Just call. Release him, him now. Yeah, that's all it would have taken. Click. And mm -hmm. they would have had to do that. <laughs> uh, and they didn't. And they did it for political reasons because he was saying things they didn't like. Now, was it the smartest thing for him to be in Ukraine no. saying the things he no. was saying? No. And I'm not wasn't. saying it was. And I told him a hundred times it wasn't. But, no, but. Uh, he was still an American citizen, and mm -hmm. uh, they could have easily freed him, and it's an absolute disgrace. that. Uh, and I had not heard what you said, that he was actually uh, you know, burned and tortured uh, on, on top of all this, which just blows yeah. my mind, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so, anyway, I just want to wrap that up on Gonzalo. And if you do set something up, let me know, because uh, I, I would definitely help promote it here on the Kill Stream. Yeah, that's um, exactly what I'm just thinking. We got to sort of like, it, it, it in the networks that we have, once we can get this going, or his sister hopefully can get it going. We, you know, just just something for his kids, right? Yeah, because the earner's gone. Now. Yeah, he's gone now. Yeah, the, uh, the earner's gone. All they've got left is the mom, right? So that's all they've got left is mom. So I mean, you know, and his kids are still small, you know. So and their their dad is gone, and and now the earner's gone. And what happens generally when that happens? You know, kids grow up in poverty. You know, and if you're in a place like Ukraine in poverty, man, that doesn't sound like a very nice, you know, you know, way to go. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, and I see uh, somebody said, Ralph, Google images of Ukrainian prisons and put some of them on the screen. Uh, I've seen some of them, uh, and I may do that. Uh, and it's just some of the most absolute. And they, you know, the video they tell me he was talking about they were scratching his eyeballs with toothpicks, yeah, and, and, yeah. and just like just the like insane type torture. Uh, and yeah. of course it, it got worse, uh, but, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just lamentable. I, I wish we would have one more chance to talk and, and maybe we would have made up, maybe not, but, uh, I, I, I just wanted to see him make it home. Uh, and, uh, he wasn't able to, and, and, uh, rest in peace, uh, Gonzalo for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. we had a lot of good times. We had a few bad times too, but uh, I have a lot of good memories, uh, with him and he had a lot of good advice and he was a wise guy. Uh, not not a wise guy like a mob guy like a, yeah yeah you know I understand I, mean? uh, I understand he, 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 he was a wise a wise a wise uh, older older gentleman. Uh, Kiosk man says BP, how do you see the fallout from the Gaza war? Is there any chance it sparks a pan Arabian movement? Um, BP, and then he says thoughts on China's coming demographic collapse in a few decades. All right, so can can you repeat that part about the uh, about the Gaza? Yeah, uh, how do you see the fallout from the Gaza War? Is there any chance it sparks a pan Arabian movement? And I was going to ask you: Is there any chance it sparks a you know full Middle Eastern uh, war uh, like all over? Uh, uh, well, yeah, the, I I don't believe in a pan Arabic movement because you know 
the, the Palestinian issue was already on the back burner. Um, yeah, it was for years, and 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 you know all of the states in the Gulf were already looking at uh, at um, pretty much normalizing relationships with with Israel. The the question yeah. is whether or not if this if if Israel has the temerity, and they have already bombed Beirut a couple of times, and these are the red lines for Hezbollah. If if Hezbollah gets into a full scale war with with Israel and Hezbollah is not Hamas. I mean, they, they no, have been not. not only trained, but also equipped by Iran and other regional actors. And uh, they're a lot more dangerous, right? Than, than, oh yeah, and, they're talking about a ground evasion in the Southern Lebanon, which would be- And if, if that happens and somehow Iran is brought into, into the fight, you could see a complete destabilization of the area. And this, this would be, this would be the, the worst case scenario for the United States. And this is one of the things that I would say is that I think Americans are starting to realize that Israel, as you said at the very beginning of our conversation, Nikki Haley says that, you know, it's not that America needs Israel. No, no, excuse me. Israel doesn't need America. Amer what is it? Israel doesn't need America. America, America needs, needs Israel. Israel. Is that how, yeah. how you framed yes. it? Yes, that's okay. what she said. That's her direct quote. Okay, yeah. I, I hadn't heard that, but it doesn't surprise me. But I think what's happening is a lot of people are starting to understand is Israel is not our greatest ally. It's, it's, a, it's a liability. And and should like they through they and I think that they believe that they have America by the balls and they can do whatever they want. And if they start something in southern Lebanon, all bets are off, is what I would say. So um I think that uh yeah, that that well, they're having problems with, in Gaza. Uh yeah. what do you think is gonna happen? What do you think is gonna happen in yeah. southern Lebanon? Uh, you know, um I don't know. I think that's a lot of saber rattling. I don't. Th I don't even think they'd be that dumb to do. To do no, that. no. Uh, I, I, especially yeah, yeah. after what's happened, I don't think they'd no. be that stupid either. No. Um, with regards to the Chinese demographic collapse, I, I don't know. I keep hearing like uh, pundits like uh, Peter Zion talk about how you know he's been saying China's going to collapse for twenty years. Uh, demographic collapse. I don't know. Is it really going to be? Now you take a look at like, for example, a country like the United States that isn't that's importing by the millions people with. You know 75 80 iqs right i mean one of the, the one of the largest reasons we have uh, statistics on iq was in the first world war and they come from the united states military and what they were doing was seeing where they could allocate jobs to you know like so for example i think when you join the military you still have to take an intelligence test and aptitude tests and they use that in order to sort of see where you can go within within the, the service, Officer, right? Captain, yeah, all this, yeah. And and one of the things they understood is that an IQ lower than eighty five, they didn't trust you with machinery, like they didn't even trust you to be a driver of of a, of a heavy vehicle, right? And you've got a country like the United States that's literally importing millions and millions and millions of very low IQ people, which is a worse a worse future. Uh, a, a decreasing population, but you've got the augmentation now, not only of robotics and, and machinery. I mean, you take a look at almost everything now. I mean, they could make like McDonald's can be done, you know, like I think it's in in uh, in the United States. They're already because they, they in California, they raised the minimum wage for for fast food workers to a point where they can't sell hamburgers at a profit anymore. They just put robots in there. And with the augmentation of AI, AI is is pretty much going to be able to take jobs that you never even wouldn't have even thought of being taken. I mean, one of the big things they had a they had a big um, the uh, the Writers Guild in the United States for Hollywood had a big uh, strike there last year, and one of the big one of their big sticking points was that they they had they demanded that studios were never allowed to employ AI in screenwriting, right? Because the AI could just I mean so I mean they already had AI. For a number of years working in you know industries like insurance and lawyering stuff that you generally used to have to have and accounting you used to have degrees to get and they were solid middle class stable jobs and they're just good they're evaporating so like the, what, what's happening with, cpa yeah and yeah, yeah my mom my mom was too yeah. my mother was too so i mean these were solid middle class jobs that are just being evaporated so the chinese demographic collapse yeah they're going to have problems in one of the problems is that they they massively overbuilt but the problem is is they're going to have a, a property price implosion but one of the things is, is that most of their debt they owe to themselves and it's the same thing as japan right so the big difference between the united states debt is they owe debt to everybody else whereas like places like japan places like china they have massive debts as well like national debts but most of the money they owe they owe it to themselves and with some creative accounting you know you could get over that um so 
the whole idea of China's demographic collapse, I don't know, I wouldn't be quaking in my boots. I'd be more worried about having, you know, five to 10 million low IQ people arriving on your shores every year. I mean, take a look at pictures of Los Angeles in 1984 versus 2024. And, or take a look at pictures of Seattle in 1984 versus 2024, and then extrapolate that now till 2044. And, and what do you think American cities are gonna look like with another, you know, 50 to 80 million, 75 to 80 you know, IQs, you know, I mean, you, I, I think I'd rather take population decline than population, you know, uh, never ending population increase. And I so. had this uh, liberal professor and uh, I was doing my thesis for my um, political science degree uh, and he was liberal Hillary Clinton supporter. I got along with him anyway. Uh, of course, I used to be a little bit of a leftist myself when I was in college uh, and I, I was like, you know, it looks like China, like uh, they're on the upward trajectory and we're on the downward trajectory, right? Like yeah. They're, they're yeah, going to be the hegemon bef before this is over with. And he said, no, don't worry about it. He said uh, they have so many internal conflicts uh, inside their own country. China will collapse on its own uh, within the next 20 years. Uh, and well, that was 13 years ago. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm not yeah. really seeing that. No, I, I don't think it will at all. I mean, I think it's a lot of people that they, they all they do is they try to put American or, you know, Western models onto uh, other countries that are not the same, you know, and you can't use the same metrics uh, in, in terms of things like this. And then, and one of the other things is, is that with the, the, the rapid population replacement in places like the US, Canada, the UK, is that countries that have social solidarity, and this was actually the um, the, the point I was getting at in the, the video I made just today, you guys can find it on my Black Vision Speaks channel. It was released a few hours ago. It's talking about uh, a recently released secret Pentagon study on what's, what it called, it was China. Let me see if I can, it's China and the implications of Chinese racism on American foreign policy, right? And uh, what it goes into is that at, even during stressful times, stress tests, unicultural societies and this was this was confirmed by you know harvard uh professor robert putnam about 10 years ago uh, anyone want just look up robert putman and uh, you'll find it famous political scientist yeah yeah, yeah yeah political yeah. scientists at harvard no. is that that multicultural societies basically on every metric ruin community and and ruin societies in the long term where unicultural or at least cultures that have a dominant, a, class. A dominant culture yes, yes. Are, are a lot stronger yes and especially during stress tests so if you have like something like a big economic event where everybody gets poor it's like okay we're all getting poor together but you, a good example of this would be the um the, the second world war and and the 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 blitz uh on, on great britain where you had you know the entire country even though their houses were being bombed they were all on rationing you know, they, they couldn't, you know, buy anything, you know, the, the whole, their whole country was being basically decimated. They still, they still got behind their leader and they said, we're going to, we're in this to win. So, you know, um, I, I think the whole idea that China is collapsing is, is now they've been saying this forever. You know, one of the things is, is I, I think that they are just not using the right metrics. And even if, if, if calamity does come economically, the, the the countries of the world are so inter interwoven if there's a big event in america the knock-on effect happens in china happens in japan happens in europe the same thing goes the other way now right so like it's it's they're all so interconnected economically that if you see an implosion of the chinese economy because of i don't know the property market or whatever you're going to have this is going to have serious effects in the united states as well but the question is is how is how are those societies going to deal with those stress tests? And I would, I would venture my opinion that China would probably deal with it a lot better than any Western country. And, and one thing you have to understand is I don't live in China. I've only been to, you know, China a few, maybe, uh, maybe a dozen times in my life. That's about it. I've never lived in China. Um, I've lived all over places, but I've never lived in China and I have no love for Chinese food. Chinese women can be pretty attractive, um, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, uh, so I don't have any any you know dog in this fight. But I, I honestly believe that uh, that China is not in as bad shape as as its detractors would like people to believe it is. 
Yeah, and I remember somebody asked me this question, and uh, you know, of course, um, I I have all kinds of guests on the show, and and uh, it was Vouch actually uh, that I was debating, uh, and, and I'll wait till you I'll wait till you step back. So you saying Vouch was, was on Vouch. the show? I, no, I was debating Vouch on another show, mm -hmm. and. Um, did he have a job like sitting in between his legs? And no, he... well, I I couldn't tell, but um, he 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 basically um, the question came down to did I think um, whites should be the dominant class in America th that whites should be the majority um, population in America, and I said yes, uh, and he tried to spin that into a racist statement. And I was like, it's not about racism. It's about there. There has to be a dominant class in in every country. You know what I mean? Like, if, if it's not if it's yeah. not like that, uh, things are gonna fall apart. And there's never been a case in history where that hasn't happened that I know of, at least. Um, when shit hits the fan, that's the reason. It's not because I'm racist. Uh, it's because there there has to be a do there has to be a dominant class because if not it's going to turn into civil strife especially when shit hits the fan it's going to turn into possible killing each other uh, that's just well, the way well, the world I, works. I would say what I would ask I would have retorted two things um, I would have retorted one you know should Japanese be a minority right. in Japan should uh, Nigerians be a minority in Nigeria should um, should uh, Thai people be a minority in Thailand? And the other, the other thing you I you know, there's I a law in Mexico that they don't um, they allow immigration, but uh, only to a certain point. Uh, and if it hmm. starts to change the demographics, they shut that shit down. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, 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 no same country would be doing what we're doing. That 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 goes without saying. The the other question I would have asked him is: Show me historically a multicultural society that wasn't able that that. Show me a multicultural society that could survive in a liberal political environment. There's none. Any multicultural society that has any longevity to it always has uh, either authoritarian government or, or, or authoritarian leaning. And once that authoritarian government is pulled off, you get things like, you know, Austria, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. You get Yugoslavia. You get Rwanda. You get India today, right? I mean, if, if, if you have different uh, burma right now is a very good example of like bengali migrants pushing up against the borders you know raping and killing you know raping buddhist women and cutting buddhist monks heads off so what you have now is you've got like these little bald monks in burma wearing their their orange or red robes talking about how okay well what we have to understand is that these people, if we don't fight back and annihilate them and push them out of our country, they will kill us all. So uh, you've got like these genocidal Buddhist monks in, in Burma now. That's and, not what they're know, known for usually, right? <laughs> no, no, Buddhist monks are usually like, whoa, 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 whoa. And, and so you've got these Buddhist monks getting genocidal. You look at what happened in Yugoslavia. You look at what's happening in Ukraine, a lot of it is an ethnic problem. A lot of it began in 2014 with the suppression of the Russian minority in, in, in Eastern Ukraine. It, it was an ethnic problem. You see the, the split between Czech and Slovakia. You see the, the breakup of countries. You show me one, you look at even in a place like Singapore, where it's 75% Chinese, they have basically an authoritarian government. Malaysia is the same. It's authoritarian because it's a multicultural society. So you show me any multicultural society that has any sort of longevity to it that wasn't tainted with authoritarianism, I'd, I'd like to see it because I can't think of any example. You know, they'll say stuff like, well, Canada's multicultural. Canada's been multicultural with a European base for 500 years. You had some French, some Dutch, and some English, and then you had the, the native community. But the native community, you know, they're out in the forest doing their thing. But there was enough there was enough resemblance between European uh, immigri, immigrants and the same thing goes for the United States. You know, you had generally the same uh, religion. You know, there was Protestant Catholicism, you know, there was, and, and there was still tension there between Protestant and Catholic, sure. Catholic. You know, so so even even a minor difference in doctrine has has, you know, repercussions. Uh, in, in a country where almost, I mean, you're all speaking either, you know, a Latin or Germanic, a European language, you know, you're worshiping the same God, you know, uh, the, the, the cultures are 
using the same uh, uh, writing script, you know, like ABC, one, two, three. So the, the differences were not even that large, but still there were tensions. Even to this day, in, in, there's, there's Anglo and Francophone Canada. And, and it's just, you know, well, uh, we are French. And uh, we, we, you know, and the English are like, well, fuck you, frog. And then the, the French are like, oh, fuck you, Anglo. And, uh, but I mean, these countries are, are similar enough you know, that they could have survived. But so this whole idea of, you know, Canada being this multicultural, I mean, this multiculturalism shit didn't even start until like the late 90s, early 2000s, right? So, I mean, multiculturalism didn't even exist in Canada. Multiculturalism was the outcome of French, French Canadian disgruntlement at what they perceived was their inequality to Anglo Canadians. And it started into something uh, called the um, the quiet the quiet war in Quebec, and it was it was literally like IRA stuff in Quebec in the 1970s. Yes. And one of the, the 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 agreements was was that biculturalism would be in, introduced into Canada. So if if you were in in the western part of Canada, you could still get any government service in French, but if you were in French Canada, you get anything in English. And if you you know you bought a you know a soda water, it would say you know, or, or milk. It would say like milk in English. And it would say in like French. Yeah, And they still do French. that in the parliament. That's why I have yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they exactly. speak in English yeah. in parliament. I mean, yeah, French in parliament. And yeah, French yeah. in parliament. So that was the thing. And then it just, after that, it just mutated into multiculturalism when mass immigration started. So, I mean, uh, you know, getting back to, I don't even know where we're going with this, but uh, I think maybe with China and whatever, I, I, I think that uh, we're, we're, oh, you're talking about Vouch. That's right. And uh, whether or not America should have a white, uh, majority, yes, of course it should. But if if that majority was black historically, then I think America should have a black majority, right? If if right. historically the the country was settled by by Africans, and up until 1965 they they accounted for 90 percent of the population, you know, I would say then then America should stay primarily a black country, right? Yeah, it's not so, about the whiteness. It, it's about no. the multiculturalism not working, yeah. unless, like you said, I mean. You start chopping motherfuckers' arms off if you start, uh, you know, going really hardcore. I mean, you can hold something together, but not in a liberal democratic way. Uh, mm. You, you no. can't do it like that. I mean, you can be strong arm, uh, but but it just it just doesn't work. And well, these, take a look. Like nice. Iraq is another example in the sense of, of what they had. It was doctrinal difference uh, after America toppled their government, toppled Saddam Hussein, and had no idea what to do next. What happened? A, a civil war between Sunni and Shia uh, occurred. I mean, the, the same when they toppled the Libyan government. Libya was probably that the 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 had the highest quality of life in 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 Africa, next to South Africa prior to the end of apartheid. So after the end of apartheid, Libya was probably the, the had the highest standards of living on the entire continent. They toppled his government. The whole thing is, a, you know, Iraq. You know, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Human beings are tribal creatures. And this idea that ideology is somehow going to trump evolutionary uh, uh, tendencies is just it's it's fanciful thinking that someone like, you know, Yuri Bezman, Bezmanov would smile and glee, in my opinion. And I see I see a, a point in chat. And I'll let you ask because uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier. You, you, you didn't say it was for no reason, but I, but I want to read this. Nakoda, he's a good supporter. He says, there's never been a case in history where a dominant nation invited in unlimited foreigners for no reason. Then he said, except now and such nations are fucked. Um, what do you say to 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 that point? I, I don't know that it's for no reason. It's a replacement. Oh, well, there, there's there's well, there's a couple of reasons. But uh, what he's talking about too is something that you should really understand is that even during foreign invasions, and we could go all the way back to the Roman times. Yes, well, the Romans you, did it. Worked out really well. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. the Roman, but the, all the Romans would do, and if you even look at like the 1066 and the Norman invasion of the U, of, of England. Yes. Historically, whenever there was invasions. All that was replaced was the ruling class. The, the people didn't change. So, like right. you had, like England's a very good example of this. You know, the Romans invaded. They left basically no genetic trace. There's no Roman DNA left in in the British people. The Vikings invaded. They set up colonies, but strangely enough, there's not really many Viking. There's 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 not much Viking DNA in the UK. And and you know the 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 Normans invaded. And they, they knocked out the Anglo-Saxon ruling class, but all the people that were left were still the same people, right? So it, it's it's almost like unless you had 
stuff going back to basically the fall of Rome, where you had some tribes that were being pushed across the steps into Rome by other tribes, like the movement of entire groups of people. Like this is stuff we haven't seen since the fall of the Roman Empire, where That's entire right. populations are being replaced and being replaced in a matter of a couple of decades. Because usually any kind of invasion always saw, you know, the, 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 the ruling class toppled, but the general peasant class or just the normal people staying the same. And what's happening right now is it's, it just it doesn't happen normally. And part of that, that article or the study I was reading is it, it talks about part of what the United States has done is in order to expand empire, they've had to not only invite the world into their empire, but pay for them to do so. Right. So like when you if you, you cross the border, you know, you get a phone, you get a five thousand dollar gift check. And that puts you into some housing. Whereas, you know, it's the same thing in, in, in Ireland or the UK. Yes. You know, if you're a British British citizen or an Irish citizen and you don't have any money, you're sleeping rough and dying in the Guess cold. Guess what? That's how it is in Mexico, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, but 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 the point is, is is that it's 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 the United States government, the leadership in 2020, and especially the Democratic leadership, one of the biggest things America has tried to do is convince the rest of the world it's not a racist country it's it's a country that that everyone should want to join and it's it's part of part of its its pr as, a, as an imperial power but 2020 and and the, the saint floyd of the fentanyl riots where you had the the american political establishment say no america is a systematically racist country they basically threw the whole country and its project under the bus geopolitically and internationally so, and this this was one of the the, the points in, that 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 was in this article, talking about how you know China China just doesn't care about race like that they 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 have they have in their own self they're like we're Chinese but they're not trying to expand as an empire they're 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 a civilizational state and even if you look at them for the last thousand years they they have their area you know they they you know they've got you got your Uyghurs over here and you've got you know your Tibetans over here but you know they're not they're not trying to physically move into other territories like they're never going to invade america or they're never going to invade you know uh i don't know india like that's just not their thing they're 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 not uh, they're, like for the last thousand years they're they're a trading mercantile empire they're not like a physical empire i mean and if you look at chinese history i mean they've lost every single war for the last thousand years against everyone they've gone up against they even lost their own civil war you know the chinese government you know now they're they're exiled to taiwan so um i don't know i think i think uh i guess did i did i answer that question no i um, think you did i think you answered okay, it yeah. i think you answered it very well uh and I, i'm looking through just for a couple more um questions here uh let me ask you this though You're uh right. and, and unless i see another one um this is what i ended on a lot of times um you know, I had Simon Roche on a few months ago. I need to get back with him to get him back on. Uh, South African guy that I know. Um, is there any hope uh, for for a rebound to the United States? Uh, you know, he he. I talked to him, and he said the whole world's just watching it with, with their popcorn ready, watching yeah. it as a joke, seeing it turning into this trannified, just pussified, just absolute, just ridiculous, no sane nation would, would do this. And this is the global hegemon doing this, by the way, right? Yeah. Just completely trashing their nation, trashing their culture. Trashing um, their history. Trashing their history. Yes, doing all this. And he's saying they're watching it with popcorn at the ready because there's just no way to save this thing. No, I, I don't. I, I think the United States is crashing and burning. And I mean, I've got a friend of mine, and I'll probably do a stream with him in a, in a, in a few days, or maybe even tomorrow. Uh, he's, a, he's an analyst, uh, a, a U.S. military analyst. And one of the things, you know, he was talking about is that it's going to come a point, like, because the United States has had since 1944, well, not even since 1944, previous to that, but we're talking about the post the post war era, uh, the the world reserve currency. Yes. And world reserve currencies, if you go back 500 years, I mean, the Dutch had it, the Portuguese had it, the Spaniards had it, the French had it, and the British had it before America had it. They last anywhere between 70 years. I think the British had it for the longest at 105 years. Um, but the point is, is, is that position of, of having the world reserve currency allows you to export 
your debt and allows you to export your inflation. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, people in the United States, they don't really understand, like they think it's normal to have like two gas guzzling cars, be able to have, you know, a massive plates of food every day and, and all of these things. Talk to people, our grandparents age who grew up in the great depression and they'll tell you, you know, like this is not normal. It's the same thing as war. War is, is the natural state of man, not peace, not, not 80 years of unremitting peace. This is just not human nature. We're not meant to live like this. Not saying I'm a warmonger in any way, shape or form, but the problem is, is extended pieces can be just as, as, as destructive to the human psyche as war. And I think that in terms of like, say the United States, you're already seeing because of the Ukraine, especially with the, they've confiscated, and they haven't, they haven't seized it yet, but they've confiscated over $300 billion in Russian foreign reserves. Yes, I've been reading about that. And, and <laughs> it's basically outright theft. And if they, if they actually, if they not only confiscate it, but then they seize it, you're, you've already seen that this confiscation thing and Russia being cut off from the SWIFT, uh, the banking system, yes. is you're seeing country after country after country after country moving out of the U.S. dollar for trade settlement. And if the United States, not if, when the United States loses its position as the, the, the holder of the world global reserve currency, I think that's when it's going to happen. That's when the United that's States, exactly that's, when, said, that's when it's going to kick off. That's a, that's the exact answer he gave. Petro oh, Robert. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the exact it's once same that, answer. once yeah. that, once that, once the United States loses that and, and real biting poverty comes home, all of the dollars come home to the United States. The value of the dollar collapses. People can't get enough food. They can't go to work because the entire, all American cities are built around cars. I mean, you can't get around anywhere in the United States without a car, but then in order to have a car, you got to have gasoline. But the pro problem is, is that when all the prices go up, can't afford gasoline, can't go to work, can't feed your kids yada 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 this is all going to happen when when the petrodollar goes goes belly up and it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when because you've got even part of the reason the petrodollar was created was up until 1970s 1973 i think it was or 19 it was during the oil shock so that was like during the um uh around the same time so before the oil shocks you had what what it was was you had the united states dollar that was it was pinned to gold and it was it was it was detethered from gold by nixon because all of the other countries it was the french that pushed it they they saw that the united states was because all of the currencies around the world there wasn't floating currency rates they were all pinned to gold and then the gold was pinned to the dollar but it was the french they saw wait a minute it's the same thing as that that jews did in the middle ages when they first started lending money and giving out paper notes you know they, they they'd say oh we've got this gold in reserve but they actually would give out more paper than the actual gold, gold that they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what and the Jews did it in the Middle Ages. And this is, you know, what caused a lot of resentment, I think, uh, against uh, this group of people. But also the United States did it uh, so badly for like 20 years. And the French, the French were like, uh, we want our gold that's being held in, in the United States. We want it back because we could we know that you're printing too much, too much US dollars. And Nixon just said, fuck you. And and they and it was Kissinger that came up with the idea of the petrodollar of going to these like Saudi Arabia, going to the, the oil producing regions and saying, look, we know your despotic regimes. We know you behead those that insult the Prophet Muhammad. We know you rape little boys. We know you, you live in, a, in an autocratic kingdom. You, you're, you're against absolutely every value that we supposedly espouse. But look, if you denote your, uh, your sales of oil in our currency we will protect your regime militarily without question and then you can you can run that money back through our our, our treasury bills our t-bills through our, our system and you can make interest on that money but look your regime is never going to fall and this is what what it was kissinger that worked this out the same kissinger i told you that you know it's dangerous to be america's enemy but it's absolutely deadly to be america's friend same guy and he only died last year by the way i think he was That's like a right. hundred just like less couple months ago yeah. yeah yeah he was like a hundred years i think it was a hundred or 101 something like that i mean he, you got to imagine i mean this guy was advising you know nixon in in the 60s you know like 68 like he was nixon's uh security national security advisor in in 68 i mean he was the one who who brought a detente with china i mean this is how how how, how long ago this guy's fingers were in politics and and he was like he was he was 
like the go-to elder statesman for all of these U.S. presidents, right? You know, all the way up, Barack Obama. It didn't matter party affiliation either, because he he, he was a guy that dealt in real politics. You know, yes. I, I there's there's not many of those left. He's like a Zygmunt it's a Brzezinski Bismarckian type. character. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And there's not many of those left, and that's why it, it didn't matter policy po political affiliation. Presidents, you know, whether they were Democrat or Republican, always went to him for yes. advice in 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 issues of global geopolitics, national security, you know, trade, all of these sort of things. So, uh, you know, this guy, you know, single-handedly saved the U.S. currency from from basically being, you know, unloaded. And I think they've pushed it again too far. You know, where where okay, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna block your entire country. Uh, from the global trading system and, and the global banking system, and we're going to seize all your assets, and we're going to like basically bring your country to its knees to our banking system. I mean, if you're like a country, like unless you want to be a vassal, like let's say for example tomorrow Germany, the AFD becomes I talk, like basically there 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 are three things, there are three things, there are three election platforms. The AFD for those who have just uh, joined the conversation is the alternative for Germany or the alternative for Deutschland. It's the, right. the growing um, grassroots right-wing party that's second in, in polling in, the, in, in Germany now that they're trying to uh, have banned to protect democracy, right? Uh, just just the irony of this shit. Yeah, the irony of this shit. We're gonna make it so people can't vote for who they want in order to save save the vote. But their, their, three, their, three, their platform is basically is, is getting out from underneath american military uh, uh subjugation stopping mass unrelenting uncontrolled population change through unremitting uh immigration and and the third is is normalization with the russians right and 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 getting you know the energy back right so what would happen if the germans said tomorrow to the united states look fuck you we know you blew up our Nord Stream pipeline that thing cost billions of dollars you crippled economically supposedly an ally we understand you're where you're a vassal, but everyone knows the Italians know, the, the Germans know, the, the French know, we Germans know that you're waging economic war against not only our country, our continent, for your own geopolitical you know aims, and your aims are absolutely contrary to ours. So you know what, asshole Washington, get your fucking troops off of our fucking land, and what they do is they rebuild the the the, the, the pipeline with Russia. What do you think Washington's response to Germany would be? They would they would basically literally try to crush them economically. So it, it doesn't matter whether you're friend or foe, if you don't throw yourself onto you know the the the, the sword of American geopolitical the, the geopolitical political hegemon, you 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 don't know where it's going to go. Like being America's friend, look at how many of America's friends. Going back all the way, I don't know, I'd go back to the 1960s and 70s, what they did to the Vietnamese, just left them high and dry. You know, they didn't, they do this all the time. This is why I can't understand how any country would get like mixed up geopolitically with America and say, oh, don't worry, we've got your back. Because time after time after time, they don't. And if you go against them, even if you're your friend, they'll try to destroy you. Well, it's so, just like um, Baker saying that uh, I believe it was Baker who said, "Oh, don't worry, uh, we'll never Ukraine. You know that'll never happen. NATO and all this stuff." And mm -hmm, yeah, uh, well, they just straight lie. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not an honorable country anymore. And if you can't if you can't trust uh, if you can't trust that, uh, then then there's no reason to to not try to build some type of alternative system. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I I don't know, man. Uh, I I don't really see a way back either. Uh, I I keep waiting for somebody to give me some white pills on on how these things could could turn around, but I haven't really heard any. There, there, uh, there, there's there's no way it's going to turn around. The, the question is is what comes after. And you know, if you had some kind of balkanization of the country, and you know, you, you I, I think I think a country like the United States would have worked a lot better had it stayed in the framework the founding fathers you know had for it rather than this overarching federal government unironically basically put into place you know originally by abraham lincoln you know like you know just the overarching power of the federal government if states were allowed to be more independent you know like states united states right you know um you know so not the united states but 
you know, like just stuff like, for example, I'm seeing right now is that like the Texas border is being fucking overrun, overrun. You know, I'm reading it's like, what is it like? I don't know, 10,000 a day or something like that, or even more. I don't even know. It's just, just these, you see these, these, these caravans are just endless military age young men pop, and the conservative and the supreme court uh yeah yeah well this is what against... i was getting at <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and so so that the governor there abbott you know he's like okay we're we're, we're gonna protect our border and, and biden biden says no you're not allowed to protect your border and that's the president of the united states and they talk about insurrection and treason i can't imagine a more treasonous uh, uh any more treasonous than joe biden in what the way he's handling the border crisis you know, so um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't think that in, in its current form, there is any white pill for a country like not only the United States, Canada as well. You know, I think European countries might have a little bit more because they, they have a a longer they've had a longer shelf life and they have yeah, um, a lot longer a shared a lot longer shared history. But I think new world countries like Canada, the United States uh, in their current form, they, they, they just don't have. And that doesn't have to be a black pill because you know what? Something could come afterward, after the crash. Something out of that could come. Something better that's much could better. Come out of that. Yeah, that's true. And so, for yeah. a good example of that, would be Yugoslavia. You know, like Yugoslavia was a forced, a forced uh, country of multiculturalism. Once the authoritarian was pulled off, the whole fucking country went to war, and they killed each other for I don't know seven years. And uh, the you know the country just it, it was, it, but it wasn't fratricide. All right. It was it was it was ethno ethnic groups against each other right. fighting over who would get what at the end. Right. After the you know, it was it was basically and, you know, you know, you go you go to the former countries of, of Yugoslavia. They're, you know, Croatia is really nice, you know, and it's and it's the way they wanted it. You know, they didn't want to be superseded by an ethnicity that wasn't theirs, the Serbs, for example. And then you had, you know, the Croat. I mean, that was the shit show because it wasn't one side against another. You know, it was like you know, factions all over the place, right? And that's kind of how I would see the United States playing out um, in a certain respect. The thing is, is I, I don't know, everyone, it, one of the things I find almost hilarious about Americans online is like, yeah, that's right, we've got the, the Second Amendment, yeah, we got the guns, we got the guns. I mean, for fuck's sakes, man, you've had elections stolen outright and in public. You've had your, your government hijacked. You know, you've had like taxation without representation for decades. You know, what is it going to fucking take? You know, for the, the guns to come out, right? Because there are those, those Euro polls, they don't have their guns, right? But like, what the fuck is it going to take for these, you know, for any kind of, and I think, like I said, it's it's going to be the collapse of, of, of the petrodollar. You know, like they're not going to come out for it from, from any kind of, uh, 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 of political, any kind of like uh trouncing covid for example that the lockdowns and and that the sort of stormtrooper-esque police force that that we had you know going around like making people stay in their fucking homes losing their businesses you know like you told me like i remember when your mom died you know you weren't yes. even allowed to go see her in the hospital i was not there you know, I remember, I remember period. that. There was a 10-day waiting period, and it wasn't even because I didn't have the vaccine. I never took the vaccine. Well, they, said, they, die, yeah. they said there was a 10-day waiting period for anyone to come in and visit uh, somebody that had been admitted to, and she, basically hospice, you know, elderly care. She was Yeah, but that's the whole out. point. What but the but it was 10 days no matter what, whether you had the vaccine or not. It was 10 days, and my mother died on the 10th day, and I yeah. didn't get to hold my mother's hand while she died yeah, I know. because these I know. jackboot fucking thugs yeah. stopped me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what that, that would be like. When my mother died, I was holding her hand when she died, when my mother died. And, and, you know, I can't even imagine. So like the COVID, all of these things, like, you know, I mean, it, all of the institutions, the media, the police, the Congress, the, the academia, like there's, there's absolutely nothing that people have respect for or, or even believe works in their legitimate best interests, nothing. And, and that's why like, I, I'm, I'm pretty much, once the circuses are not able to hold the plebs back in, in check, and there's a, a serious sort of economic implosion, that's when you're going to see the knives come out. And that's when you're going to see, like, that's when it's going to kick off. So, you know, I would say to people right now, you know, watch the U.S. Uh, national debt. 
I mean, it went up by like a fucking trillion dollars in two months the other day. You know, I was looking at it over a two month period. If you see it go above, 37 to 40 trillion let's say it's getting close to 40 trillion is it not yeah. yeah so once it hits once it hits about 40 trillion i think all bets are off because that's when when all of the people that hold the debt realize that they're, they're never going to get their money back and this is when they're all going to start cashing it in right so it's it's and, and it's not even that debt because that debt is not uh accrued to for example long-term liabilities the united states has you know like retirement pensions medicaid uh, veterans affairs, all of the things that, that America owes, not today, not today, but like the, the money that, that, you know, they've said they're going to pick up 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the future. You know, you look at like, you know, all of the veterans from, uh, from the, the, the 20 years of, of fighting in the sandbox for what I don't even know. I mean, all of these guys, they get, you know, basically, uh, you know, free medical care for the rest of their lives. They get they get pensions you know you serve 10 years in the army you get a pension or you get a disability pension or you get some kind of money some gives me that from the governments for that you've got you know people who are getting older you know i mean I, as i see it right now in most countries they're trying to push the the age of retirement before you're allowed to get social security up yeah, to like are. 75 right and and the thing is, is this is not a gives me that program social security in all of these countries is something that you had no choice but to pay into and all of them are insolvent, you know, because they took that money and, okay, well, Ukraine needs it, right? Uh, you know, we took that, like, th this hasn't been, like, I remember one of the the, the things that uh, Al Gore was completely made fun of during the election. The lockbox. The lockbox, that's exactly what I was going to say, the lockbox. And, you know, he was going to say, and, and, and to be honest, he was right. He was know? right. Like, he, he was right. We put it in a, in a lockbox that the government can't touch. You know, this is money that is set aside, you know, uh, and and we can't we can't mix it with with the you know the contracts for Boeing and Lockheed Martin or you know money for Shaniqua and Section Eight or money you know for whatever. I mean, he was right. Al Gore was right to tell you the truth, and uh, you know you know it's one of those great you know what could have been because one of the things is is that you know it's funny because before the the bush uh gore election there was no red or blue states right they, they that was just they changed the color every four years some some elections were purple and yellow yeah, some yeah. elections were and it's kind of funny how the right wing party comes down as red and the left wing come party comes down as blue which is totally i wonder if that wasn't engineered else. yeah which yeah, is yeah, completely yeah, the opposite yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh but but i think though even back in those days things were not so politically polarized you know like i i mean i i like you know i would if i had voted in 2000 i would have voted for gore not bush right um uh and and i wouldn't have voted um for obama because i saw him as as a globalist stooge um and you know just just different i probably would have voted for clinton versus uh what was he he was against dole and uh I can't remember who it is. Uh, Bill George Bush, the first one. First one, yes. And then it was, yeah. And then, and so I would have probably voted for, I would have voted for Clinton. I would have voted for Gore. Um, I'm just saying, like things weren't so politically paralyzed because people were still American. So you could find common ground, right? It's like, all right, I disagree with you on this, but you know, we got to okay, elections over. Let's get to work at, at at running the country, or let's get to work at like. You know smoothing over the differences now it's like every election no you didn't win no you didn't win no you didn't win and, and then there's violence him, in the let's street. get him out of there yeah, yeah yeah like it's it's not a functioning system no it's not a functioning system so it's just like it's not it's like you can it's like you know like i remember just just stuff like uh, do you remember when nancy pelosi she picked up that that paper after trump's uh state of the union and and ripped it yes and it was like threw it over that kind of of political uh theater would be i'm Thinkable twenty years previously, no matter no matter how partisan you were, or how much you disliked the president, it was respect for the office, right? Not the man. Like that amount of just political posturing would have been unthinkable twenty years ago, and now people were applauding her for her her being you know Courage. brave and stunning. Yes, yes, her courage. Yeah.
her uh, courage. Yeah. And it's not, I don't know. Uh, it's not going to get any better. Uh, no. Let me ask you this final question. Thank you for spending right. so much time. This is one of my favorite interviews I've had in a long time. I've really been wanting to talk to you for quite some time. You've always been, yeah, no worries, dude. guys. Uh, but let me ask you this prediction, any prediction uh, for 2024 could be politics, could be election, could be anything else. Uh, a prediction for 2024. Uh, a couple of predictions. I, I, I believe this will be the, the year of the end of the Ukraine war, and it's going to come down with a crushing Russian victory. And uh, I think it, the Ukraine is going to be in a very bad position, negotiating position. I don't think Russia is going to be too harsh, to tell you the truth, because inevitably these, these are basically two of the same people. It's like, right. it's like the, it's like the Scots and the English, you know what I mean? Or it's like the, it's like the, 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 the Walloons and uh you know the the french right, right? you know like they're they're, they're essentially or the, the austrians and the germans they're essentially the same people right um so i think russia honestly is i think what's going to have to happen is 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 that's going to be a, just a, a shit show in the center of europe for the next generation but i think that's going to come to the end i think uh prediction for i think it depends on on who will win the presidency based on on how long Israel intends on fighting in the Middle East. If Israel intends on fighting, you know, into next year, or it goes toe to toe with Hezbollah, I think Trump will win because the establishment will see that, that, you know, he, you know, it's Zion Don, right? Make Israel great again. He, and he has, he has an organic following, right? Like there's no politician I can think of in my lifetime that had that kind of following, never. you know, where, where, Nothing you know, like it's, it's called there's like never been anything like him. Yes. in my life yes. you know there might have been before i was born but i don't know you know maybe, maybe like fdr I, uh oh yeah maybe yeah, fdr yeah. maybe maybe eisenhower but, I, but I wasn't alive like you said but uh nothing like like i've seen since i've been alive. in my life nothing like uh, that so i would say so it depends on who will win i i don't know even if joe biden will be capable and kamala harris wouldn't so i mean if if I'm wondering if they're going to try to co-opt Nikki Haley into the vice presidency. I don't know if Trump will put up with that. Though. I don't think so. She um, said some things tonight where I, I, I just yeah, think she's yeah, she. Yeah. I think she's just angling herself, though, to to be honest, not even to get a cabinet position, but just angling herself for for lobbyist groups and yeah. and you know sitting on Bowling boards and they're bond contracts. Oh yeah, yeah, just just selling her political connections. So if 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 the if the war heats up in the middle east trump will be reelected the deep state won't go against it this time social media big tech the media they won't go against it they won't fortify the election uh if not i i still think trump has has the momentum because but the problem is is, is i don't really believe that elections in the united states are fair and free anymore so i don't so if, if it doesn't, I think Biden could take it. Not enough, because I don't believe there's free and fair elections in the United States. I just don't believe it. After 2020, it, nobody can convince me that the United States is a functioning democracy or that the country is, is a functional republic at this point. Nobody can convince me. So um, well, that not, would be it. It's not even just you know. look at the Congress. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I think there's going to be massive, massive, massive uh, censorship on social media coming up to November. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. I think uh, Israeli and APAC control over the United States is only going to get worse because there's been a, 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 a just a, a, a tectonic shift in the Overton window in the last few months on on people's not only their 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 view of who's actually running things in the United States, but actually people saying it publicly. Because as we were saying previously with with Voltaire, you know, if you want to see who governs you, who rules over you, look to see who you can't criticize, right? You know, you got Alex Jones going, "What's well, the Chai Coms? The Chai Coms own Hollywood." It's like what? You know, like you know, he, you know so I, I've seen him. He's right about a lot of stuff, and I'm not I'm not dissing on Alex Jones, but um, you know, look at who you can't criticize is what I would say. So um, yeah. I don't know. That'd be about it. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, any Same. other questions? Or no, I'll that was it, man. I really lunch. appreciate this interview. This is one of my favorites in a long time, I have to say. And I'm going to clip it out and put it on the channel on its own. Um, of course, you can watch the replay of the stream, too. But uh, 
Black Pigeon Speaks. Uh, Felix, man, I really appreciate you spending your time with us here tonight. And I want you to let people know where they can find you, promote some of your new stuff or maybe some stuff you're working on. For uh, the yeah, I'm trying to promote my own Rumble channel. My Rumble channel is Felix Rex. Um, I'm going to be trying to move it over to there as much as I can because it's coming into an election season. And, yeah. and anything I do political, you can't put on to normal social media. I'm, I've, I've already been... I had a, a page on, on Facebook It had like 40 or 50,000 followers. And now it's like, it's been locked because I, you know, uh, when, when, um, I'm just trying to remember when, when the U S ran tucktail, uh, out of Afghanistan, was that August last year? Yeah, or the year yeah it was, it was August. Uh, it was either last year, year 22 or 23. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So I made a video because no, it was Taliban, 22. It was 22. It was 22. Okay, I made yeah. a video. Okay, after that, the 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 sort of humiliating route of the United States, which it was. Uh, the, the the Taliban were the, the the guys that were in control of the Taliban were making all kinds of memes. I don't know if you remember, like they, they were, were making fun of Joe Biden with uh, the ice cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, 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 or they were like they they're just the, 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 uh, the Taliban were making memes. And then there was the whole Tala Chad meme that was going yeah, around. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just made I made like a five minute video just laughing about it. And uh, my my page got locked on Facebook for promoting dangerous or criminal organizations, you know, like like and, and this was a video made a couple of years ago, just making fun of internet memes, you know, like like these. I, I have a feeling after I'm seeing where Elon Musk just spent his uh, yeah his last weekend, I, I have a feeling Twitter's just going to go back into the shit. I'm having that same feeling. You've already seen the screenshots; yeah. they're already deboosting yeah. big time. Everybody yeah. Yeah. included. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I, my, my, I've been demonetized on YouTube since 2019. I've, uh, uh, you know, like, I've had no, like, nobody gets the notifications. Tens of thousands of people, they keep coming back. Oh, I got, I've been, uh, you know, unsubscribed five times. You know, I have to come back and check. And like, so all of these social media. So going up to this, this election year, I mean, like, take a look at it all. Like, you weren't allowed to talk about the election. You weren't allowed to talk about COVID. You weren't allowed to talk about Ukraine. You know, it's just one thing after another that they, they. They put it in, and then the problem is, is, is people aren't. It, it's it's like uh, it's like um, Stepan Molyneux said when I mean it was it was fucking insane the 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 deplatforming of him. I mean he got kicked off a of Mailchimp for God's sakes, and all he did was talk about you know uncomfortable subjects, right? He wasn't talking about violence. He wasn't talking about overthrowing insurrection. He wasn't talking about murder. He wasn't talking about rape or any criminal. He was talking about uncomfortable scientific issues. And, you know, he said when he got booted off of everything, he was on BitChute for a while. I think he's still there and I think he's on uh, Gab or whatever or, or Mines. And he said, you know, I didn't get deplatformed. I got replatformed. But most people are too lazy to, to just click a button to go to a different website. Right. And I'm, I'm hoping that people will be able to do that. So Felix Rex on Rumble, uh, if you want to follow me there, everything goes up that I make on Rumble first now. And uh, I'm on BitChute. Uh, I'm on uh yeah everywhere basically except for facebook now um, <laughs> you know and, and that's because i because of the tala chads right so, <laughs> uh, those darn tala chads you know those 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 whippersnappers those smart alex you know black so, uh, speaks one of the most intelligent guests we've ever had on this show uh and i say that without reservation and uh, just a wide ranging conversation i saw somebody in chat said i missed a conversation like this where it could just go anywhere historic uh, and just with a really smart, intelligent person, one of the privileges of my job uh, is getting to talk to people smarter than myself. Uh, and not that I'm an idiot, I don't believe that. Oh, I but don't think uh, so at all. but uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, hearing from you, learning from you. Uh, and let's not let's not make it as long next time. Oh uh, no, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Oh, and I should say, yeah, I'm on Telegram as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, what's the channel? Do you know? Oh yeah, it's Felix Rex. It's either look okay. up Felix Rex. It's everything is either Felix Rex or Navy Hato. Or no, no, Navy Hato is only on uh, on uh, te, uh, Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Right? Yeah. yeah. Everything else is Black Pigeon Speaks or Navy Hato. So the twi uh, Telegram is Felix Rex. Um, oh, yeah, not, I guess I said uh, so. The the Gab is Black Pigeon Speaks. Mines is Black Pigeon Speaks. I've got Felix Rex. Uh, you YouTube Felix Rex Rumble Black Pigeon Speaks. Um, uh, YouTube. Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. So just look for, up for either Felix, Felix Rex or Black Pigeon Speaks. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been checking the, uh, the, the 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 chat today at all. I'm just sure. 
like usually when I'm on your thing, I'm always called like, uh, I, I want to just point out, I'm not Jewish. You know, I was born Christian. My parents are Christian. My grandparents are Christian. You know, uh, I'm not Jewish because I know that, that, that I, I get it. I've in seen the, my that comments. in the chat in the past. No, he's uh, not. Uh, actually, yeah. the chat's been very positive about this interview. I think they really, really enjoyed it, actually. And so did I. Uh, oh, okay. So well, and, I, and I'd like to do it again sometime soon. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe we could make ago. it like you know, like you know, every every so often, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah I'd love to do that, and I'll check back in with you and uh, stay safe and well, happy. Yeah, you too. You know how to get a hold of me. And I had a great time, and thanks for having me, and thanks to your audience for putting up with me. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. It was really good to reconnect with you, uh, Ethan. It's been a long time. One hundred percent, Felix. Take care of yourself, man. All right, you too, buddy. We'll talk again soon. All right, bye bye. All right, bye for now, buddy. Drag speaks one of the best in the game. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.